Hello there, welcome to ITV News Meridian. The headlines in the Thames Valley. A major milestone near Aylesbury in the HS2 journey, but questions tonight over whether the high-speed rail link is still worth it if it doesn't extend all the way up north. It's much more than a headache. A migraine sufferer from Winchester describes how the condition has affected her life as waiting times for treatment double. Suddenly I have these terrible blinding lights coming onto my vision slowly. It cancels anything for the day. Also tonight, the Liberal Democrat leader sails onto the south coast, hoping to rock the boat next election. Party conference season gets underway. And surely it's too early for this. And this, we catch up with toy shop owners from Henley who tell us what they and other retailers want for Christmas. Good evening. As a political storm continues to engulf the High Speed 2 rail link, a major milestone in its construction has been reached in the Thames Valley. Engineers are halfway through work on a new railway bridge between Ellsbury and Princess Risborough, made for high-speed trains to travel underneath it. Well, as debates continue over whether the second phase of HS2 further north should go ahead, those behind the route through our region say it's essential to improving journeys. Juliet Fletcher has our report. Excavation work is already well underway, thousands of tonnes of earth being dug out from under the new bridge to make way for HS2. So there's two main things we've got going on here. We've got the work on the network rail line on the Princess Risborough to Aylesbury line. In terms of the HS2 works underneath, um, as we dig through it's a really big milestone for us um, because that along with the temporary bridge over Risborough Road means that we will be able to move um, materials internally all the way from Great Missenden right the way up to here in Aylesbury without putting uh, additional traffic onto local roads. The existing rail line is blocked off. Engineers are halfway through realigning a 1.8 kilometre section of the track on a new embankment with a railway bridge. 3,000 new sleepers and 14,000 tonnes of track ballast have been installed here. They're then going to use a tamping train like the one behind me to pack down the track bed and get it ready for use. While the work is underway, there are no train services running between Aylesbury and Princess Risborough. They're due to resume on the 30th of October. Until then, a replacement bus service is in use. HS2, which passes to the west of Aylesbury, was designed to improve connections between London, Birmingham and the north. It's not been smooth running. Earlier this year, campaigners urged the government to stop digging when a six-metre-wide sinkhole appeared in Buckinghamshire above a section of completed tunnelling. And there have been ongoing concerns about how the project is affecting the wildlife. It's costing the public tens of billions of pounds and soaring costs have led to speculation the Prime Minister is considering scrapping the northern leg of the line. Today, HS2 said there was still a need for the high-speed rail line in this area. The West Coast Main Line is one of the most congested railways in Europe, um, particularly that part of it. And yes, you can get a fast train to Birmingham, but connectivity, points in between, could be better served. So if we take some services from that West Coast Main Line onto the high-speed network, it allows us to connect more communities with Birmingham and London and to move more of our goods and materials around the country by the rail network because there'll be more space for freight services. A decision on that is expected in the coming days. But for this stretch of high-speed line, it's full steam ahead. Juliet Fletcher, ITV News, near Aylesbury. Well, later in the programme, we're going to be hearing from the Lib Dem leader, Ed Davey, who's been giving his reaction to HS2 to our political correspondent, Phil Hornby, at the start of his party's conference. Now, migraines can cause nausea, confusion and blurred vision, but many pass them off as just a headache. In fact, they can severely disrupt people's lives, as a student from Winchester has been telling us. Well, today marks the beginning of Migraine Awareness Week, as wait times for treatments have almost doubled. With more, here's Derek Johnson. Ella Mega is a university student in Winchester who's been experiencing migraines since she was 14. They began suddenly and unexpectedly. They just seemed to start one day. I can't remember the first migraine, but 
they began as these terrible, terrible like, stabbing pains in the back of my head. And they'd usually start with this blinding like splodges of light and it would be impossible to see or hear or really focus on anything. Um, and just in general, it was a really awful experience. But I've got to work late tonight, so if you could come up from day... 10 million adults in the UK are believed to be affected by migraines. And the Migraine Trust says there should be greater awareness of the pathways that exist for managing them. They can cause nausea, confusion and blurred vision, as well as pain. Research that we've launched this week as part of Migraine Awareness Week has highlighted real challenges to migraine care across the UK. We're seeing waiting times increase, we're seeing issues around patients being able to access treatments, real underinvestment in terms of healthcare specialisms, both in primary and secondary care. We're talking about a long term, seriously complex brain disorder. In Swindon today, we found several people who suffer from migraines and suffer in silence. Just have to go to bed. Sit. Awful. Yeah. Awful. My face goes numb and makes me feel really sick, so I'm on medication through the GP for them because over-the-counter stuff doesn't do any, doesn't touch it at all. One issue is that few GPs specialise in migraines. Even indirectly, they affect all of us. It's a myth that a migraine has to be very, very severe. Many people push through the attack but of course they may not be functioning at their best at work and so that has an impact on employers and generally on society. Uh, I think the worst one I've had, I've probably had it for about two days and literally I just have to lay in bed, uh, sometimes I put an eye mask over to black out any like, light and stuff, uh, can't have any sounds on at all, uh, driving home I wouldn't be able to do that from work, I've had to get people to come pick me up. There are new drugs that may lessen the impact for some, but migraines remain a painful reality for many. Derek Johnson, ITV News. Lots of you talking about this on our Facebook page. Victoria Keyes says, I suffer with migraines so bad, I sometimes end up vomiting and need to go to hospital. I take medication, she says, but sometimes they don't work, and I end up in a dark room for days. Uh, Emma Hall says, myself and mum suffer with migraines, but primarily when we eat any citrus. Eating out, she says, and enjoying a holiday is brutal for us. Martin Mayett says, I suffered badly from the age of eight until I was about 19. They stopped me dead. I do feel for those who suffer from them regardless if you have mild or severe symptoms. And this from uh, Jenny Franklin who says I suffer with migraines a lot and now I'm on medication. I had to have some time off work which is so hard for me she says. Uh, clearly so many people uh, are affected. Thank you so much for getting in touch and sharing your thoughts with us on the programme. Some more news now and a man who swindled thousands of pounds from women he met on a dating site has been convicted. On one occasion, Khalid Mahmood travelled to Oxford to meet a woman he had spoken to online. During their meeting, he persuaded her to hand over £4,000. He's been given a two-year suspended sentence in order to pay £20,000 in compensation. There's been a crackdown on fly tipping across Wiltshire with the council handing out fines to people caught dumping waste. On one occasion, carpet underlay was thrown from a van onto a grass verge. A witness took photos of the vehicle and its registration as they drove away. The driver was fined £400. The Oxford Tube service to London is expanding into West Oxfordshire. Soon passengers will be able to board the service from Carterton, Whitney and Ensham. The route will bypass Oxford city centre, stopping at Thornhill, then head towards the capital. The new services will start from the 23rd of October. Now you're watching ITV News Meridian in the Thames Valley. Still to come, Sarah's here with all the sport as Oxford United cap off a great week with a win that puts them just a point off the top of the table. And with three months until the big day, small businesses in Oxfordshire tell us what they want for Christmas. Uh, plenty more from us, of course, online. There are all the details, itv.com forward slash meridian, 0808 1010 095 is our phone number. And you can find us and follow us on social media.
And more than half of children questioned in a new poll for Good Morning Britain said they felt anxious. But nearly two thirds of parents said they weren't sure their children always tell them how they're feeling about their mental health. Well, to try to tackle the problem, ITV's latest Britain Get Talking campaign is encouraging families to take time to talk with young people. The Southampton-based charity Solent Mind says there are ways adults can initiate those conversations. Here's Kevin Ashford. So can I ask you to turn and talk to the person next to you? Starting a conversation about mental health. It's a subject that students at this school are well aware of. Mental health does cross my mind sometimes. Let's say when I'm revising, I make sure to prioritise not just my education, but my mental health because it does go hand in hand. I'm an athlete, so I, I think of how sports help me with my mental health and how I use it as a coping mechanism. So I use football because I'm passionate about it and it helps me as an outlet. Talking about mental health it, and talking about your mental health, it takes, off, it takes the pressure off you and you know, it makes sure that those around you, they can understand you and how you're feeling and building things up is never ever a good thing. Staff here say they want to encourage similar conversations at home. Families might say, how was your day? And the students might not always be honest about that. So it's about giving them opportunities to really share how they're feeling so that we can, as a community, really help every single student thrive because ultimately that's what we're here for. Listen up. We need to talk about our mental health. The latest Britain Get Talking campaign from ITV aims to encourage adults to have conversations with children in their lives as a way of tackling the growing mental health crisis amongst young people. Staff of the mental health charity Mind in Southampton say there are ways that adults can start such conversations with youngsters. In terms of talking to children and young people about difficult subjects, it can be helpful to do that when you're doing an activity or when you're driving. Sometimes it can feel a bit confrontational to be face to face. So if you're side by side, perhaps in the car or doing a puzzle or some artwork, that can be a really helpful way to engage in those sort of conversations. It is going to be staying relatively changeable. Yes, the ITV weather presenter Alex Beresford is among a number of celebrities backing the campaign. He says communication with his teenage son can sometimes be more open if they talk while out walking. If you sit down, you know, with someone, and if I'm sat down with my son, it can be quite, you know, uh, intimidating, I guess, you know, because there's nowhere to run, is there? But when you're walking and you're in nature in particular, it kind of just relaxes you and you can kind of go on that journey. And I find that the conversations actually last a lot longer. And also, he's more open. Help us with a different kind of armor. The Britain Get Talking campaign's being launched in preparation for World Mental Health Day on October the 10th. Kevin Ashford, ITV News. Do your homework and get talking. Such an important campaign. You can get more support and information uh, at our website. Go to itv.com slash Britain Get Talking. Well, the ITV Evening News continues with the national and international news at 6.30 with a preview. Lucrezia Millerini. Lucy Letby back in court. The neonatal nurse will face a retrial over the attempted murder of a baby girl. Also creating a north-south chasm. The government faces a backlash over the future of HS2. Wales on top of the world. How a record-breaking thrashing of the Wallabies paved the path to the World Cup quarterfinals. And a new study discovers whether meerkats can pick up on our mood. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Liberal Democrats from across the country are in Bournemouth for their party conference and they're gearing up for the next general election. Well, they say they're confident they can smash the so-called blue wall of Tory seats and win in lots of places across the south. Our political correspondent Phil Hornby reports. Whether they're taking to the stage barefoot and wearing a wetsuit or going for a bike ride along the coast, or a spot of canoeing, or just getting together for fish and chips. The Lib Dems do love to be beside the seaside. They've not had a big in-person conference like this for four years, so lots to catch up on. This is my first time attending the conference. I was very excited to come here and see how many Lib Dems are there. And it's amazing, I'm amazed. But this could be their last conference before the next general election, when all eyes will be on the so-called blue wall. Tory held seats in our part of the world which the Lib Dems think they can win. 
Top of their list is Winchester, where the Tories have a majority of less than a 1,000. In places like Winchester, we've got a really good chance of winning, but we're not taking any votes for granted, which is why I speak to hundreds of people every month, and they're all saying the same thing, that they're fed up with Conservative MPs who are out of touch. And here in Dorset, they think they can win back seats they used to hold. We've got really good feedback on the doors. You know, you see people in the streets and they're like, come on, you can do it this time. So, you know, it's everything to play for. This week's a chance for the party leader to showcase Lib Dem policies. So, what's your reaction to the proposition that HS2 might not go to the north? In a sense, it's gone through places like Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire and people there have had all the hardship that that's involved seemingly for nothing. I think it's a huge mistake by the government and when we listen to Rishi Sunak and his Conservative ministers it looks like they're giving up on Britain. You know, we need to have a railway system for the 21st century. We need to be investing in the clean technologies, the clean industries of the future. We heard a lot this week about the blue wall. Can you really smash the blue wall? What does it actually mean? Well, we've been smashing it already, uh, both at uh, parliamentary by-elections and in council elections. You know, and if you take seats like Wokingham, like Winchester, like Eastbourne, like Lewis, like Chichester, lots of seats around this area in what we've called the blue wall seats. Uh, and, and I think Liberal Democrats can win those at the next election. You know, we are, uh, across this region, the w only ones who can really beat the Conservatives. You were in Winchester this morning? Yeah, we were visiting with Danny Chambers, our great candidate there, who's a vet. We were visiting at Agricultural College and uh, I uh, had another go in a tractor. Uh, I think I need to apply for my tractor licence, I've been in so many. Uh, here we are in Bournemouth and you took a dip in the sea yesterday. We, we rode out to this boy and, and, you know, the candidate for Eastbourne, Josh Babarindi, he tipped up my kayak, so I, I've noted that. Thanks, I got the surprise for here. <laughs> The serious message we had yesterday is, is sewage in our seas and our rivers. It is disgusting and the Conservatives have allowed, they voted to allow the water companies to pour their filthy sewage into our rivers and our seas. We've got to clean that up. Our region has just one Lib Dem MP at the moment, Leila Moran Thank in Oxford so West and Abingdon. Hello conference, isn't it amazing to be here? Oh, Lib Dems great. here think she'll soon have company. Phil Hornby, ITV News, Bournemouth. Now here's something to make you think. Today marks three months until Christmas. Chances are you've not really given it much thought yet, but the retail sector has been planning it for months. Well, a toy retailer from Henley-on-Thames has joined many others at the big Christmas press show, looking ahead to the big day, which some say is more important than ever. Lauren Hall went along too. It may feel a bit soon. For the retail industry, Christmas can't come soon enough. This event brings together online high street brands from all over the UK. It's a chance for them to showcase their products and to look ahead to what is traditionally their busiest season. And in the current economic climate, many will be hoping it brings some much needed festive cheer. Among them, the toy manufacturer Just Play, based in Henley-on-Thames in Oxfordshire. Despite the challenges, they're doing well. But they know for their customers, the past year's not exactly been fun and games. Many of our products are between the sort of five to ten pound range, making sure that you know parents are able to find great Christmas presents, stocking fillers at affordable price points for them when they're maybe looking to cut back. Many businesses here are having to adapt, with customers cutting back this Christmas. You do feel under pressure. You're trying to sell your products. You're a business at the end of the day. You want people to buy your products, but you also need to appreciate if people haven't got the money, you can't really expect them to buy the products. So it's about finding that happy media. A sentiment shared by online retailer, not on the high street, which represents quite a few businesses from the south. It's definitely been a challenging time for everyone, but small businesses in particular, and it's kind of been an honour of ours to make sure that we're still championing, championing them through them because they hit, they find it hits them the hardest for sure. And how important is the festive season for them? Really important. A lot of businesses are depending on it, having faced a number of setbacks. It has been blow after blow for the retail industry over the past few years. We've had Covid, we've obviously had business rates, there's been the removal of tax-free shopping, uh, the high streets are in decline, uh, the supply chain challenges and now inflation compounding all of that. It's a really, really challenging time um, and it's more important than ever for retailers to have a good year. For so many across the retail industry, 
That really is all they want for Christmas. Lauren Hall, ITV News. All the best to them, but I don't like to see Christmas too soon, especially not in September. It's too early. At what point is it OK to talk about Christmas? I think... see, Middle I'm December? Maybe, yeah, but do you know what? I'm that person who'll say no, no, and then I'll see a bauble and say, oh, this is nice. Bauble, okay. Yeah, two for three at the moment. All right. uh, sport time now, Sarah's with us. And Sarah, starting the Premier League, no stopping Brighton. No, thank you, Sangeeta. Long may that continue. Brighton fans left the stadium disappointed on Thursday after their side lost to AEK Athens in the Europa League. But another win in the Premier League has seen them rise to third. But it was at the cost of a Bournemouth side looking for their first win of the season. Andrew Pate has the best of the action. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. It's now four defeats in a row for Southampton, despite taking the lead through top scorer Adam Armstrong. But the Saints have conceded more goals than any side in the top three divisions. Mistakes at the back, giving away an equaliser and then a penalty, as the Saints conceded their 19th goal in eight matches to sink to 15th in the table. Well, to Leagues 1 and 2 now, where the League 1 table is a pleasing sight for both Portsmouth and Oxford fans. They're up in first and second place following wins this weekend. Portsmouth's victory over Lincoln stretches their unbeaten record in the league to 20 games. Reagan Poole nodded the ball home against his former club to claim three points from Pompey's encounter with Lincoln City. Less than 10 minutes from kickoff, Paddy Lane had levelled after the Imps took an early lead. Poole's header, though, keeps John Massinho's men at the top of the table. And Oxford United are just a point off Pompey after this 3-0 victory over Exeter City. Ruben Rodriguez put the U's on track for the win, but it wasn't until the game's final 10 minutes that Cameron Brannigan sealed the result with two spot kicks. No let up for beleaguered Reading fans at Blackpool, where their only moment of respite was a late own goal. It meant little in response to the host's convincing win. On to League Two, where Crawley fought back from two goals behind to beat Grimsby 3-2 with this dramatic stoppage time winner from Danilo Orsi against his former club, claiming all three points. Swindon Town looked to be on course to continue their excellent start to this campaign, taking an early lead at Morecambe. Charlie Austin struck from the spot to make it 2-1. Despite going a man down, though, the host grabbed a point just 10 minutes from time. In cricket, the Southern Vipers continued their fantastic record in the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy. They won the final by beating the Blaze by five wickets. Emily Windsor hitting the winning boundary. It means they've completed the double this season, having already won the Charlotte Edwards Cup. It's absolutely phenomenal. I think where we have been throughout this season, the highs and lows, I think this one makes this one really special. I think everyone's held their hand up within this squad. We've really had to dig deep at times and I think especially the comeback after the 100. It's been absolutely phenomenal and I think every player and coach deserves this. Yes, well done to them. And finally, congratulations to Charlotte Perdue. The athlete from Windsor is now the second fastest British female of all time behind Paula Radcliffe after crossing the line at the Berlin Marathon in just over two hours and 22 minutes. Brilliant. Hopefully bodes really well for selection to the Paris Olympics. She's a regular down here at the Great South Run, works so hard. It'd be great if she got that recognition. Absolutely. Let's it's a mind blow. So. Amazing. Yeah, when well, you think about that, brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. Right, let's get your weather now with all the details this evening. We've got Charlie Powell. Whatever the weather, it always feels like home. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. Hello.
the rest of this week is going to give us a good deal of pretty fine weather and temperatures are going to stay above average as well so it'll feel warm where the sun is out Wednesday though we've got Storm Agnes working its way through which for us at least will give us just an increase in the wind speed I think but not an awful lot of rain as we head through the coming few days despite there being several areas of low pressure in charge there's Agnes the big sort of deepening area of low pressure working its way towards us dry Wednesday but it affects mainly Northern Ireland and Scotland but tide to isobars across the south and southeast of England will still give us some strong winds at least anyway. Not tonight though, the winds are pretty light and the skies are pretty clear, so we'll see maybe the odd mist patch developing and by tomorrow morning a couple of showers may start to work their way in on those sort of south to southeasterly breezes. A couple of sharp ones mixed in there as well, but it'll be a mild night, lows of 13 or 14 degrees. Tuesday though, we'll see a few more showers pushing through, certainly during the morning, well scattered, but a couple of sharp ones in there. As we head through towards midday, they tend to fade away and clear to the north, giving us a return of some sunshine as we head through the afternoon. The breeze might pick up ever so slightly, but we're still going to see those temperatures widely to around 20 or 21 degrees, which, as we saw earlier today, feels quite warm in the sunshine. High tide as we head through tomorrow. We've got pool just before quarter past nine in the morning, and again, around about quarter past nine in the evening as well. So on Wednesday, we're just likely going to see quite a bit more cloud in the sky and an increase in those wind speeds, maybe a couple outbreaks of rain later on. And then from Thursday, everything just wants to settle down a bit as well. Might be a spell of rain overnight Thursday into Friday, but otherwise we head towards the weekend, just increasing amounts of sunshine. It's going to stay pretty warm as well. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. And that's your programme this evening. In just a moment here at CITV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. I'm back with your late update just after half past ten this evening. But until then, thank you very much for watching. We will see you very soon. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.